Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Today's video is the first in a series of online workshops in collaboration with Amphibian and Reptile Conservation. It's for their exciting new project, Gems in the Dunes. In today's session, we're going to be working with ink. We'll be looking at some basic materials and equipment. We're going to go over some simple mark making and application, and then we'll move on to a longer study. So for today's class, I'm going to be working with Indian ink, but you can get a lot of different types of ink ranging from Sumai E to alcoholic, colorful types. Um, and there's loads of different brands out there. Windsor and Newton, Jackson's Art, they're a fantastic range. And it's just about finding and working out what works for you. As you can see, I've got a variety of different brushes here, ranging from traditional acrylic and watercolour brushes to sable hair brushes. I've got some um, Japanese and Chinese calligraphy style brushes on the right. There's a tatty old house brush. Um, I've got a couple of sponges, a couple of sticks, nibs. I've got quite a variety of different drawing utensils that really come in useful when we're making different marks with ink. You can also find a variety of really cool pens at the moment. So these are feud and Japanese brush pens. And they're really useful if you wanted to take something that has the same effect as using kind of brush and dipping ink, but you kind of don't want the mess or you're out and about and you want to capture something in the sketchbook and it's kind of perfect for that. Um, pencils and rulers and rubbers and erasers are obviously also super useful if you wanted to put in some very light line work. Okay, so I just thought I'd showcase some of my work here um, and just some of the things that you can, different styles of drawings really that you can accomplish with ink. So we've got some nice tight illustrations that I've used a variety of pens and smaller brushes and dipping ink. And then this is kind of a combination of everything. So you've got brushes and pens. These are a bit more expressive with just kind of um, the Japanese calligraphy brushes on a Sumai E paper again quite expressive, quite quick. And then the last image, we go on to the links. And this is kind of, again, using different values and watering the ink down a little bit to create those tonal ranges. So to start, I'm just gonna kind of familiarize myself with ink. Um, if you're new to it, if you haven't used it before, I definitely recommend a couple of scrap pieces of paper, a couple of different brushes, just have a little play trying different weights, um, starting thick and ending thin, starting thin and ending thick, see how fine you can get your lines, see what happens when you put water down and add a, a small amount of pigment, see about different brush strokes and marks. Here I'm just playing with a little stick, um, which is just a found object around the house really, and it's got this quite nice effect. It produces different textures. The sponge adds a little element, a newer element, sorry, too. Um, Again, with the house brush, seeing what that effect might have. And again, just having a little play, really, just working out what's what. Again, just using the pens here and just comparing them to how they might differ from the dipping nib, um, seeing what the different marks are like, seeing what the textures are like, seeing how they handle the control. It's just really useful before you go into a drawing to know how your medium works, really. Okay, so we're going to start with um, Bit more basic application and I'm literally going to keep this quite simple I'm just going to draw out some geometric shapes so squares cubes circles I'm just going to see about the different shading I can apply whether it's block sections whether it's gradual gradients um, on the 3d objects kind of kind of make them kind of give them a light source and create shadows and dimensions by just using simply one tonal value so block ink or what happens if I water it down and again, this is just a useful exercise to play around with if you're not familiar with the medium. Um, don't be afraid to try different shapes, to try different effects. For this one, I'm, I'm literally just using quite a lot of water and then I'm going to add some pigment into the bottom left corner and let the ink kind of do the work. I'm going to kind of really just subtly move the ink around quite slowly, but ultimately I'm after all those beautiful, beautiful textures that you can see just there as they're going to give it quite an organic feel. 
And the more I work, the more I play, the more I'm just trying different things out. Can I play around with white space with maybe a bit more of an illustrative style? What happens if I have a shadow? Can I exaggerate certain things? Um, and I think it's really important to notice as well at this point that maybe unlike acrylic or oil where you'd often finish with your lightest point, you know, you'd add your highlights, whether it's on the eye of a portrait or the reflections of, uh, the reflections of water or something, you'd often end with your, your highlights last. You don't really have that luxury of ink, so you have to kind of paint light to dark rather than dark to light. And often your lightest value is the paper that you leave. So as you can see here, I really want the top of my cuboid to be super white. My light source is probably coming in from the top left. So we've got a little bit of shade, medium tonal value. Um, and then the bottom right of the cuboid is fully in shade. Same with the circle, kind of leaving that nice reflection that you might get with a glossier finish. And I'm kind of just leaving that and then I'm gradually building up the surrounding areas to create this 3D object. And again, I'm just playing around just like I was with the mark making. I might try different cross hatches in a minute. Um, different marks, different lines, different weights, different thicknesses and see what effects they have really. It's just a, a way to play and, and familiarise myself with the medium. Sweet, so we're just going to jump into a longer study now. We're going to be drawing this little tiger beetle, um, native to the Sefton coast. We are going to just start by drawing out some rough guides in pencil. I'm being quite light and quite quick here. I'm not spending too long. I just want to kind of make sure I get the, the body right, the head right, the, portion, the proportions of the legs, the antennae, uh, just so that when I start hitting it with ink, we can kind of be a bit more confident about our marks. Quite often when I'm working in a sketchbook or if I'm doing plans for a painting or something, I probably wouldn't even bother with this bit because I quite, quite like working quite fast. So quite a lot of the time, I just want to capture that information quite quickly. But for this study, because I want it to be a bit more accurate, take my time with the pencil and I just lightly add that in. And then it means that we know those marks are going to be in the right spot when we come to, to work. So again, I'm going to start with my nib I'm going to just start lining out some of the legs, the eyes, the key features, cementing in some of those lines so that when I come in with brushes and water, I kind of have good guides to work off. And I am just taking my time here with the pen and nib, just making sure that the, the structure of the insect is going to be correct, making sure, you know, anatomically, I want it to be pretty accurate. Your drawings might have a little bit more character or a bit more flair or a bit more expression from your mark making. And that's one of the great things about ink. Like you don't have to just do super tight illustrations, but for this one, I'm going to try and capture a lot of different techniques in here. So we've got quite nice tight line work and then probably have some more tonal values with different shades of ink. So again, just capturing those back legs now. I'm just working through the drawer and methodically, just working out, making sure my proportions are correct. 
if I've made any mistakes with my um, pencil work, then now is a really good time to correct all that. So say if something's too long, too short, out of place, or it's not the right size, then kind of this is where I'd just make my small adjustments as I go along, really. So for hair and things, so as you can see, the, the beetle has kind of these hairs underneath its shell. Uh, this is a really cool tool for capturing them. I was playing around with a stick earlier in the video in the mark making little session. That would also probably work really well, or say you're capturing other parts of the dunes, like the, I don't know, the tall long grasses or um, other foliage. You can capture quite a lot of detail with these tools and they're really affordable, really accessible. Um, you can probably pick up a good kind of calligraphy dipping nib for, I don't know, four or five pound. I think I've had this one for 13 or 14 years now. Um, as you can see by the color of the cork around the thing, it's, it's had some use. Um, and again, just kind of making sure those legs now are everything's right, making sure kind of the, the sections of the legs are the right shape and right size. Um, I'll take my time with some lines and then for the hairs, you can see I was a little bit more erratic with some of the marks I was making. So you can see I'm spending quite a little bit of time on the eyes. So I've added a little bit of water, which has automatically run some of the ink in. I'm pretty happy with that effect, but you just notice I've just blotted a little bit away. So while it's still wet, you can blot a lot, a lot of your color or pigment off, kind of similar how you'd work with watercolor. And it can give like some really nice textures, some glassy qualities, which is really important for when you're capturing eyes or kind of reflective surfaces. It'll also add texture as well and depth. Um, and it's something that I might come back to later because I've not overworked the area. Like earlier when I was saying about working light to dark because we can't add on like white without using white paint. It's important sometimes that I take my time and build up those layers and, and gradually add in the darkest values. Obviously, if I want to capture some super quick drawing or if you go back to those larger expressive palm trees or the giraffe, then it's not much too, too much of a concern because a lot of the character comes out the expressive mate marks. But for this, like I said, I'm being a bit more methodical, taking my time, um, making sure the brush marks are correct. Okay, so again, because the darkest part of the, the beetle is the, the iconic shell with the markings, I know I can go in and I can start putting down these real dark values. Um, I can just go ahead and kind of add a bit of expression in there, block out some of the, the darkest shapes and shades. Um, I can work quite quickly on that, quite confidently too. I've left one of the, the legs a little bit lighter just to give the illusion it's kind of in the background because I feel like if it was equally as dark as the four legs, it would be confused for being in the foreground and obviously the, sorry, the uh, leg is on the other side of the beetle, so it's kind of important. And again, just working around the eye now. Obviously, eyes are super important anyway to capture. You kind of, when you're doing a portrait of either an animal or a person, it's always really, really hard to get the eyes correct and they can often make or break the piece because there's so much character or personality in the eyes. So I'm starting to come to the end here and you can see I'm probably adding a little, few more expressive marks. Um, starting to keep those dark values, some different angles of the brush to signify kind of the shadow and give the, give the beetle a bit of depth. Um, starting to make some final touches around the head, the back, the, the shell. Um, 
I'm actually going ahead and blotting some of the excess ink on the top and then reapplying it on the tissue to give some texture, which is really cool for say like sand or wood or bark and you can kind of give the beetle some context and it's not just this study on a white piece of paper. Kind of the shadows and the texture kind of help bring it to life a little bit. And they're all useful techniques if you're doing a, a larger study yourselves or if you're kind of working in a sketchbook and you just want to capture a landscape or some information around you. Again, just adding some little suggestive marks underneath each foot to, to give it some placement. I think there we have it. I'm just making some final adjustments, some final tweaks, some a couple of last minute brush marks. And um, I think I'm all done with my little study of this tiger beetle. If there's any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. And thank you very much for tuning in. Peace. <laughs>